one of the more interesting topics of the past couple of 24 hours so if you're not in the uk you wouldn't have known but on my side of twitter and social media there's been a crazy crazy event happening where this young lady has walked into a hair salon so a, a beauty store here in london where they sell extensions and beauty products and hair stuff you know the usual stuff and um, for mostly black people according to the information that we had when the video first came out the lady was trying to get a refund and the shop owner wouldn't allow her to get a refund and i think the initial story was that she gave the woman store credit she didn't want to accept it so then she left with the items that she came in with but then as the video plays you'll see the store owner essentially strangle her put his hands around her neck and start dragging her all around the shop and it looks really really crazy no you can't i'm gonna call the police i'm gonna call the police <laughs> outside then we've got then we've got cctv showing different angles of what occurred and it's just silent so you won't be able to there's no sound on this one but you see a different cctv angle that kind of gives a, maybe a bit of the build-up before the strangulation gate happened you see the owner going behind the tills he's walking back in front of the tills maybe nothing's occurred just yet he walks towards the door holding his phone and i think it's just another angle here in a second Maybe I think this is after it. I'm not really sure, but something's happened here. It switches the angle after. Let's wait for it to switch in a minute. So people are inside, you know, acting nonchalant as we do here in England. Oh, I can't This is when it actually went down. The lady tried to leave. And this, I guess, is them scuffling. As you see the one lady kind of moving out of the way. You see the bucket. You see the basket. You see him dragging the girl in back to the store. Ch fucking choking her around the neck. It's fucking crazy. Another angle of it. So you can see the full thing. You see the lady coming in from the right hand side, I think, here. She's trying to leave the store. The guy's stopping her, um, like he's playing football or something. He's still stopping her. He's pushing her in the chest. Then he pushes her in the face. She kind of slaps him. He then gets annoyed by that. Then he starts to grab her neck from the back. And then he starts to push her back into the shop. So it depends how you see it or who slapped who first, whatever. But it looked like he got annoyed by the that. The owner slap. says the incident was not and right. Here's, and here's a report from ITV that are kind of reporting on the whole thing as well that I kind of ripped from Twitter as well that kind of speaks about it so you can kind of hear the guy narrating and give him more background behind it. But the protesters outside say the footage is another example of violence against black women. From my experience, when we're training, we're not trained to put our hands around people's necks like that, regardless of the situation. You have training to deal with aggressive customers and that does not include strangulation, doesn't include choking. Yeah. It's just completely disrespectful. The way that people communicate, especially towards black women, needs to be in a more respectful manner. I bought quite a few things from this very store. It's disgusting to see the way that another black woman was treated. The police say the woman was arrested on suspicion of assault and later bailed pending further inquiries. Antoine Allen, ITV That's News. Hilarious. She got arrested. Not beating me. And what should I, so this what is should a I do? this is an interview with one of the, the manager that is obviously that is on the video choking the the young lady as she's about to leave the store, and he's now looking over the CCTV footage and talking to the ITV journalist and basically you know uh, pleading his case as to why he felt justified to strangle the lady in the store. So let's start from the beginning again and hear what he has to say. ITV News. Start beating me. And what should I what, what should I do? Well, many people are saying that you shouldn't have choked her. No, I did Choking means like, <laughs> it looks like I am choking her. What? What do, you, what do you think happened? It's not choking. Like I, at the moment, my hand was like, one hand was at the back. Okay. <laughs> I didn't choke her. She she walked into my my clasp hands, right? That's, that's, like what, that's what those abusers say, right? My fist was clenched and she walked into it. Oh, it kind of reminds me of that scene in The Simpsons when Bart and Lisa are fighting and they like close their eyes and they just start swinging. It's like, oh, if you come in my way, then I can't be responsible for hitting you and shit. It's like, bro, you were choking her. It looks like I'm choking her, you know? What the muck? I was like detaining her. If you could detaining go back her. in time <laughs> to before this incident, See? would you act exactly the same? No, I won't behave the same. I think I like, I just want to keep her inside. It, it wasn't an intentional like, it just like get, get around her neck randomly. And if that was your <laughs> daughter or wife, how would you react? 
I would react the same way the people are reacting. That same thing is like what the second moment I need to think about being as a man or something like that. I should ask my daughter, what should you have done? Have you done something? The owner of Peckham Hair and Cosmetics says there's no refund policy on the items the unidentified customer wanted to return. After an argument over policy, the 31-year-old woman went to the back of the store to pick up replacement items, whereas the owner went to the entrance to block her from leaving. At this point, an altercation happened before another customer recorded the now viral choking. For the people that are angry and passionate about what they're seeing in that video, do you have any regrets? Do you have a, a Definitely message? I have regrets. That's why I'm talking to you like that. These are the regrets. Like when I, when, when I told the police officer, I don't want to press the charges. These are the regrets like at that time. I don't want to press charges, he's saying. How does he get to decide that charges are not going to be pressed? This country is so backwards. How does that happen? Because even if you agree, even if you say that young lady hit this man first, say that you say that, they were still violent to each other. In my opinion, his force was excessive. She was obviously being excessive, but they were both excessive. Like it was kind of a, it was basically a fight in, for, for lack of a better term. If that happens, surely both parties should be sat down and spoken to. Why is one person in a position to say, I'm not going to press charges and the other one isn't? Just because what, she walked into his shop? Just because you walk into someone's shop, it doesn't mean they have the, you know, they have the fucking right to hit you or to choke you because you don't agree with their fucking store policy. That's not how it fucking works. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And I think the only way to kind of look at it is to kind of view it from the point of view of like, who do you believe story-wise? If you believe the account that, this lady bought something because i saw some account that says she bought something that was defective and then i guess because it's got no refund policy she still went there and said hey this is defective maybe the bottle was open maybe it was off or something had a funky smell maybe it looked fake because a lot of these stores they want to admit it but they do sell a lot of fake products especially creams and stuff that you're going to put on your body and whatnot it's really unsafe so maybe she said that and went back there and the guy didn't believe her because these guys just won't believe you, right? They're just going to be like, no, I don't believe you. Um, and then an argument ensued. And obviously, because both parties are not able to, to like de-escalate, they're not able to um, conflict, resolve. Um, it turned into a situation where he had to kind of, he felt like he had to choke this girl to get his message across. And she felt like she had to hit him several times to get her message across. Obviously not the great way to go about things. But I still think in these situations, just talking it from it from a man's point of view i think it's within your responsibility especially if you're talking to women especially if you're in this type of business where you own a a hair shop so you're going to have a lot of you know a cosmetic store whatever you're basically calling a beauty store you're gonna have a lot of women coming in you should be able to know how to um de-escalate situations talk to them reason with them because you can't use your force because you're a man you can't put your hands on them so you should always figure out a way to use your words to get your point across and to make it known um what the position is what what can be done what's the solution the fact that he doesn't to me in my opinion it's a big red flag that most likely this has happened before most likely he's had other instances with other women coming into the store mostly black women i probably assume who've given him a bit of attitude back who maybe disagreed with something he said and then they've had an argument and he's resorted to doing something where he uses his body as intimidation. He put hands on them. He says crazy shit to them. I don't think he's ever been a guy who's like been able to like de-escalate calmly, speak to them, reason with them, um, you know, take them from a 10 all the way down to a five. He can't do that. He definitely needs to have a person who will push you out of your store, to, you know, start saying expletives, kind of ban you, all this sort of nonsense. I'm sure he's that kind of guy because to go straight to that extreme in this situation is too much because surely there could be a, a resolution that you guys can come to an agreement of whether you store credit whether you say you can only exchange it for the same item whatever it may be something like that needs to be done because women you know they take their fucking hair and beauty stuff seriously most women will probably be happy to order this stuff online because there's many retailers that will, that will ship this stuff to you even places like amazon but you go to these local stores because you can get them immediately but then the problem with these local stores is that they have a monopoly on the in, on the scene on the on the locality of where you are and they can get away with murder because you've got no other option if you want to go out you've got a party to go to you don't want to wait for something to get delivered to you you want to get it immediately you have to go to these guys to go get it and unfortunately 
unfortunately, in my experience in London, um, especially in a place in London that I live in East, there is a place called Apton Park where we have exactly the same issues. There's been scores, even some, I think even my mum might have had an argument with one of those guys there, but there's been many accounts of aunties having full-blown arguments and fights with the guys that run that hair and beauty store in um, Apton Park Market. I think there was even, even a case of one of the guys in that shop um exchanging like sexual favors for like discounts I'm, honestly it gets it gets a bit grimy this industry or this scene or this sector so that's the thing that's really disappointing about it and the thing that's really disappointing about the east the apton park one they've always known to they've always there's always been known to be cunts i think the nicest hair and beauty shop i can think of in east london is the one in stratford probably in the shopping mall there's like a little hair and beauty store in there but i think of the one in east Ham. i think of the one in apton park and a few others they're all fucking cunts and they treat you like fucking shit and they kind of put you through the ringer and it's always like you know you can't use card or you couldn't spend over a certain amount no refunds all this fucking nonsense right so the really sad thing about this is that us black people, for whatever reason, we don't learn from this. We don't, especially when it comes to these sort of stores. I think of the, you know, the swanky clubs in Soho, where loads of, especially, you know, super cool, attractive looking young black girls or really, you know, suave looking young black boys will go to these clubs in Soho and go and party and stuff or have a good night. And they'll rock up to the venue and suddenly the bouncers or the door pickers are saying, not tonight, it's four. And then a whole group of white dudes will come in, a whole group of white girls will come in and they get in first. It happens all the time. And those guys and girls will get online, they'll complain about it, but then they'll go back there again the following week to try and get in and try and assimilate. I don't really like that. I don't think we need to assimilate these days. You can just create your own thing. You don't need to go and try to bloody um, shock and jive for these people that clearly don't want you in your establishment. The same thing goes for the hair salons. The same thing goes for the fucking hair beauty shops and shit. You don't need to do that. Too many of these places have taken a piss and they've been allowed to because the aunties and the girls or whoever goes in there they just kind of have no other option and they end up shopping there again i've always been the kind of person who always votes with their feet and i just do it silently i don't really you know there's no hullabaloo about it if i don't really like things if i don't really like the people behind it like i've always said before i had a very um tetchy and bad experience with the guys behind palace and ever since then i've never worn the brand ever but i haven't made a big post about it i don't go around saying hashtag fuck palace and shit i just don't wear it you know i'm not going to support something when i think the guys behind it are cunts so the same thing goes for um these hair beauty stores if they mug you off if they you know especially if you know the the the, the, the girl that got fucking strangled in this video could be any number of black girls um in london who go to these stores on any other given day in fucking london so you should see yourself in that person because these events can escalate very quickly right you're already frustrated you've got many appointments to go to you've got to pick up your dress here you've got to get your hair done there you're already on 10 your fucking phone is there, whatever you're just and annoyed then you go into these stores and you got this fucking donut of a dude who doesn't know the difference between restraint and choking right and he's arguing with you and saying you can't return a defected product because it's already open it's like bruv it's defected that's why i'm coming back and giving it to you fucking cunt so i would hope that this would be a sign for people to just stop going to these stores and stop kind of giving them money so that they know to to like fix up and be well, well behaved and kind of earn your business again or another thing would be to set up your own businesses and treat people the way that you want to be treated in these kind of places but unfortunately those things don't usually end up happening and most likely all this hullabaloo will be for nothing and people just go back in there again when they need it because they've got no other options um but good thing i've seen has been some of the protest as you can see here there's people gathering outside the store in peckham protesting everything that went down standing around saying if you've done it to i forgot what the chant you do it to her you've done it to me outside of a place called peckham hair and cosmetics and shit people have been going absolutely goo goo gaga over it and then if you read an account here from i think a young lady what's it this is the first that's the actual original account that kind of made it go viral a big this account of a person called troy hudson when you scroll down it kind of gives more context of what actually went down let's read the first caption of here the visual video she says every time i pass peckham cosmetics the staff members are screaming abuse at customers today at one for one for sorry um 
115 this lady apparently wanted a refund and was of course refused um she went to leave and the store and this hefty man dragged her in with excessive force and strangling her right so she's already saying she's a local and she sees this happening all the time and i have to say as a local and as somebody that's grown up around the areas around apton park and shit i've seen many a people complaining and fighting with the people inside those hair and beauty stores and the ones in east Ham or whatever it may be so i definitely believe that to be true um the next tweet she says i didn't take this recording another lady posted this on her ig i wouldn't have time to record this because i would be backing her up um this so i wouldn't sorry i would wouldn't have time to record this because i would be backing her up in this crazy situation yes i'm the brave to involve myself especially to defend and protect her from the audacity of this man a quick update from ig trigger warning it says 2 p.m today we assemble violence against women won't be tolerated there's a, pers a person called sace holmes lewis um it says violence against women will not be tolerated these people ex extract money from our communities every single day now we boycott them and ensure they go out of business wow so they're really going for the jugular um trigger warning this is da -da -da, so they want them to go out of business um this happens today in peckham a woman struggled by one of the workers of the cosmetic store the woman went to ask for a refund and the man who can be seen in the video hanging her um, became <laughs> hanging her you know aggressive with her and the woman on bad terms left the store and he proceeded to drag her into the store um this is not what we want to see on the social media or in the streets and it could happen to any of us please share this video and in the end of the video you can see the store it's after primark in the peckham high street there's more clips of here people protesting on that side chanting and shit gathering shutting the shit down i think police came after as well and interviewed people there um i don't know why the black woman still didn't go to the shop she said me neither it's beyond me been bugging been begging my friends and family to stop shopping there for ages but again it's convenience brother you can't blame people do you know what i mean it's essentially you're living in um in a in a store desert right there's not a lot of these stores around where you can buy these particular items cosmetics beauty products that you can't find in other places you can't find them in boots and whatever it may be um you don't want to wait for amazon to deliver it to you maybe it's more expensive there's always a bit of a markup on those online stores so you want to get there immediately you want to maybe browse other options like all these things are really important but unfortunately the people who have the monopoly on them don't seem to be um very um they don't really seem to be keen on having good customer service. They just know to treat you like shit because they know you have no other options but to come back there again. Um, obviously, people are posting the shop address and leaving bad reviews. Um, da -da 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 -da. So, going back to the video, who do you actually blame for the choking? That's the thing that I'm not really too sure about. Um, but I'm not really too sure if it actually matters. That's what I'm trying to think because I think in this situation, men should always be in control, especially when it's a woman attacking you. You should either try to diffuse a situation, diffuse a situation, walk away, restrain, but choking her like this with both hands around her neck, you could have broke her neck, bro. Like, do you know what I mean, you could have had this woman could have died what because of some fifty pound weave or hundred like what like what's going on, bro? Relax, do you know what I mean? You don't need to do all that. It's a bit too much. So, for me, I think the force was just excessive, regardless. It wasn't necessary in the slightest. But if we go to the video where it shows where it happened, when you see the front maybe there is a possibility you could say the girl maybe hit him first again it doesn't justify his um response but if you're just going to go in terms of what actually happened in the video and who hit who first maybe but i'm still confused why the police didn't arrest the store owner you can't just choke someone bro um let's see or maybe the police said you can maybe that's uh, that's um appropriate use of um restraint if it's your store so as the girl comes up to the store owner they're arguing he kind of he's kind of holding out his hands trying to push her back into the store which already is a bit of a it's not a defensive position it's more of a you're already primed to go it kind of feels like personally because there's a way to restrain her without having your hands out like you want to grab her arms and shit but anyway maybe I'm, I'm i'm being a little bit too forgiving here he keeps pushing her away she spins around she's trying to go back into the store again let it load up a minute she she's trying to go by the side of him he okay that's when it that's when it gets disrespectful he keeps if you're going to restrain her and do the whole pushy thing maybe just aim for the arms right but then the moment he pushes his hand into her face i think that's when it gets a little bit much and he oversteps his mark that's when it turns into a fight and again also think about this he's actually lucky this girl doesn't seem to have like brothers or male friends that ride for her because this could end this could have ended really badly for him 
if this is somebody else they could have gone and got their boyfriend their cousins their nephews their uncles friends from work like this could have ended very very badly especially in a place like peckham like he was really playing with fire and um, this could have gone left very very quickly you know but i guess he was hell-bent on making sure she didn't leave with whatever she exchanged and again this is a dumb situation she comes in wants a refund you get into an argument she exchanged it with something that she already bought just write it off bro it's not that it's not it's not that big of a deal you can write it off and ban her from the store that still works you don't need to fucking choke her so she tries to get through and then the disrespectful point is here she tries to walk around or in between the these ladies at the till and the man then he gets offended and pushes her in the face right there that push in the face that sort of snaps her neck back and it's disrespectful because you're putting your, fancy, your face your hand in someone's face and she then immediately reacts like anybody would and hits him right back in the face slaps him not even a it's not even a proper slap you know what i mean he kind of gets a little bit agitated and he sees that oh how can you slap how can you slap and that's when he gets look that's when he gets irate see he's like look he already probably doesn't have a lot of respect for women anyway and he decides, said okay cool i'm gonna teach you how to teach my daughters because that man said oh, how about your daughters bro he probably hits his daughters at home that's a bad this guy definitely hits his daughter so he's not really a good example he probably does worse for his daughters at home i would assume um but yeah that's who i would say i'd say they're both um, so i say they're both in the wrong for not being able to deal with this like adults but i still think you as a man should be able to de-escalate the situation especially as a shop owner especially as a shop owner where you predominantly deal with women and be able to kind of put their snippets in the bud and kind of get it over and done with there's an interview here with the owner himself i'm going to play a little bit of it um and then i'm going to continue he interviewed with some lady from GB News, he says. Thank you so much, Sahel, for joining me and having this discussion. I know currently that there is a protest that's happening outside your store in Peckham. And this was down yeah. to, you know, the viral video of what I would deem and what other people are saying um, was an abusive and an aggressive interaction that took place between yourself Both people. and a Both customer, people, which I do agree <laughs> was out of context hence why we are having this conversation with you today so um, you know what are your recollections of what what happened in your store she came for a refund for three packs of hair mm -hmm. i told her we don't do refund either you can exchange the stuff or you can get a credit out so whatever you want i can do that one she said that one okay. the lady who was sitting here she told me you're gonna get a she will get a refund I said, she is not here at the moment. What I'm telling you now, I am showing you the receipt. And we need to go through what I'm telling you now. So anyways, if you want the refund, you can do the refund, but the way you're speaking to me... Okay, he's lying straight away. He's lying. He's definitely lying. He just didn't want to give her the refund. If it's true what that lady's saying and she got the, the got the hair and she was told by the clerk who was there who was a woman, don't worry, I'll give like maybe it's a maybe it's a it's a fucking pro policy they have on the store. But maybe case by case they're like, hey, if you want a refund, we can give it. So she approved the refund. She came back the next day and unfortunately she had to see this guy and not the woman she spoke to. And him fumbling his words here and I think that's where he's lying, for sure. He started to be rude to her. I, I, I basically think she came in already flustered and frustrated for whatever reason. She maybe had, she already had a bit of a attitude in some respect, but I don't think she had an attitude to the shopkeeper. She just probably maybe had a scowl on her face, whatever. People are allowed to walk into shops the way they want to walk into shops, and I think she, that's really why she snapped. But I still think he had ample opportunity to meet her where she was at and kind of just get to you know make the situation a nice interaction. He didn't. He chose to be combative. She already was having a bad day and was like, you know what, fuck it, let's go. And then whatever happened, happened. But I still think the onus is on him, especially as a shopkeeper. And secondly, as a man, talking to a woman, you don't have an option to make it physical. If it's a dude, you can. If a guy keeps chatting shit to you, you know, all men know there's always that threat of violence when it comes to, you know, verbal disagreements. Some men just don't like talking too much and they're just going to try it throwing hands. But you can't do that to women, especially if you own a fucking cosmetic shop. You have to be able to know how to deal with these situations because they're going to happen quite often because women are always going to have issues with what they buy in there they want to maybe have refunds exchanges they may want to just argue for the sake of it whatever there's going to be issues you know how to deal with it you can't just always deal with things with violence and shit and shouting but he's definitely one of those type of dudes she was like quite aggressive more quickly and she asked you gonna do it or not the fact that he's not placing any blame on himself 
is already a red flag to me because you choked the girl. So the fact he's not saying, hey, I could have done better. I could have maybe de-escalated it. I could have maybe, you know, met her where she was at. I could have probably maybe offered some other solutions. I could have maybe spoken to her softly, whatever. He doesn't say that. He just makes it seem that she came in like a dragon. Then she was like yelling at me and then uh, I told her, in this way, I can't help you. And at the last, you told me, whatever. are you going to give me my money back? Yes or no? And then I said, no. Okay, pizza shit. So this no comes from, an, you know, like being a man, there's an ego inside you. So sometimes you do those things. Okay, see, there we go. He's lying then. His male ego came out and made him... Again, I don't know what the male ego has to do with a comf with uh, with a with a with a situation with a with a uh, potential customer or a customer. Usually, I've worked retail. You don't usually do that. You usually meet people where they're at. You're usually kind of numb to people freaking out on you because most of the time it's never you. They're usually bringing in whatever baggage they have, and you usually always try to make the situation, the experience as you know easy as possible. And usually, by the end of it, even if you even if a customer comes in super hot. They usually come at the end of it. They're usually quite thankful that you didn't, you know, match their energy. You didn't go for tit for tat. And they usually sometimes I've had some occasions where they pull you to one side and say, thank you for your service. I know I came in with a bit rude and I said a certain thing. I apologize. And they can continue moving on. But this guy doesn't know that there's no such thing. He just has all this shit in his store that he knows all, all the women in this area are going to need. And he just, you know, it's like, look, I make the rules. You have to buy here because you have no other option. But he's not in the business of trying to make it a good shopping experience in the slightest. That's not his modus operandi. If you don't buy in his terms, if you don't shop on his terms, you're an enemy. And that's what basically happened because he went from zero to 100 real quick there. Then she told me, I'm going to take the stuff from your shop and I will see who's going to stop me. Oof. Okay, so she so she kind of prompted you in like a threatening manner. Oh, come on, you stupid woman. What's that woman going to do to him threatening wise? He could just sit on her and she'd probably die, right? He could sit on her and she would die. He could sit on her chest and she would fucking die. Come on. He was also combative. He was also argumentative. He was also confrontational. I'm sure of it. He was really pacing up and down the store on his phone, acting like he was calling people to come down. Like he probably, probably mentioned, I'm going to get my daughter here. Like he was acting crazy anyway. Let's not act like he was a saint in this. Yeah. Because she yeah. wasn't happy that she was not receiving a refund. What I want yeah. to ask you, Sahel, is of course, we know that social media can make certain videos go viral at, to a detriment. Yeah. Is it really about gender and race? No, there is nothing to do with the gender or the race. She is as respectful as, as my mother, my sister, my daughter. She is respectful. She is the ladies of being as a woman. She is the same as the other woman. There's no what? nothing like she she she's from some other side of the world. No, as long as your actions makes you what you are. Okay, I don't know what the fuck he said there, but anyway, I don't believe him. I think he's talking out of his ass. I think he was, um, I think he was the one that probably set the pace in terms of the rude exchange that girl probably matched his energy because he was talking spicy to her um he already had a bit of a scowling attitude to him and i just think the fact that he that he went to push her in her face instead of just being hey please man please don't do this don't do this let's just talk about like whatever holding his hands up and blocking is one thing but he was already trying to push her back really hard he's pushed his hand in her face which then reacted with a slap and then he started choking her it was crazy he should have ended it right there. He should have just walked away. The moment he pushed her, he overset the mark. The moment she slapped him back, she overset the mark. But he should have, as a man, walked away from that situation and just said, okay, fine. You're banned from this store. Don't ever come back again. And just let her walk out with her shit. It's an L. You catch it another day and it is what it is. If you wanted to report it later, you could report it. But strangling her, like, what, what, what is that going to prove? Like, it's absolutely idiotic thing to do. And if anything, it's more representation, it's more representative of what he probably does behind closed doors than anything else, in my personal opinion. So, fuck that guy, fuck that shop. And I hope people see that as a sign that, forget the race thing, that's not really important. Maybe there is an undercurrent of that occurring. I just think in general, just go where people treat you well. If you're not getting treated well and there's other options, go to the other options. If there's no other options, you have to just be an adult and suck it up and let the person, you know, essentially mug you every time you go in the store. But if you don't get treated well, if you don't get respected, 
um if you just have a bad experience it's no need just going back there just you know to get yourself pissed off just go and shop somewhere else give your money to someone else who actually um will be thankful for your service will treat you with respect and will make the experience comfortable and enjoyable whatever it may be that's a way forward to go with these type of things um don't be like united fans right united fans want to protest about the glazers and we do fucking sittings we don't boycott we don't boycott the fucking stadium we don't not renew our season tickets we don't not buy from the fucking mega store we still buy from the mega store we still attend games we sit in on games and don't leave and when we're meant to leave and we think we're protesting and actually sticking it to the glazers and really if you actually boycott properly like how the blackball fans did when their owner was accused of doing all that madness right that's how you actually enact change actually voting with your feet but we don't do that enough um, and i hope we do now going forward and seeing that as a kind of resolution because forget the race thing that guy just seems like a cunt like you shouldn't be giving your money to cunts personally in my personal opinion that's what i think is in that in that regard and um, hey what do i know what do i know